were talking about the things and obviously male, male, but I just see you straight away. You're laying down horizontal position wrapped with some cable, black cable around you. And it's almost like they're wrapped from both sides, like starting from that left side and the right side and they crisscrossing you. Mm, like as if you were intubated or something, but it doesn't look that way. It goes only over your body. And but it's connect. It's just a weird thing that it's um, it's too connected to your each of your organs. So the liver, I see the spleen, I see the kidneys, the um, cardiovascular, like like you know the heart. It's like it's like the whole body it looks like a huge pumping system of energy. But the thing how they do it. The interesting part is that each tube, if I follow it, it kind of goes to 20, like this, this 20, it's been since I said hi to you, I've seen this number, 20 different clones, and each organ is connected to 20 different clones. Um, and these clones are like, it goes like, like this, was all them, and then I see totally different, um, goes into different realities. It's almost through, imagine like a mother gave birth to 20 babies with umbilical cord splitting in 20 pieces and going to 20 different directions. That's how I see it. And I mean, I have to go one by one to actually kind of like, <laughs> if it, that would be like five hours probably to describe <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. what they're doing. But it's something to do with the um, some cyber attack develop development of some cyber attack slash defense system and multiple scenarios of it in different virtual reality worlds type situation because it's like you're a major um, provider of the energy for all of them and they're put through different scenarios created like holographic realities let's say and it's like the effects of on you are really crazy effects because it depends which or like which each each clone is connected to different organ so it would influence each organ at a time so let's say if it's connected to your brain from your brain i see like like seven cords coming from your brain but it's like on the back of your head but it starts from this um from temple area and then they go kind of like on the back and um it affects your vision. It's like suppresses because inside I see like transparent goggles, you know, like those goggles for chemical kind of like different um, for science projects. Yeah. Kind of like the look on your hair, almost like pain going from here to here because you wear them all the time and they're, all, like, they're like embedded into you under your skin. They're totally transparent, like plastic, um, have material but more mo like uh, like um when I touch it it's not plastic but it's almost like it moves it's a weird feeling of touching a fish because it's like a live substance made out of some consciousness and I feel like they took some consciousness out of you altered it So genetically modified um, DNA material grown into tissue from stel stem cells and that's how they created the um, the implant that they put in here. 
the tubes, the black cable tubes, they seem to be made of funky substance too. When I touch it, it right away pops in my mind like black ghost substance, AI technology, because it kind of wraps around each organ and it can it siphons its energy, its frequency, it alters its frequency. So you become like a non-attack machine that supplies the correct frequency or energy in the right portions of it to the particular clone. And then obviously your consciousness is, you know, it's kind of like when I look at your energy body, it's all consists of different puzzle pieces. Like when we see a puzzle, each puzzle contains an organ. Each organ is in that, you know, there's a, like a, a membrane around it. And then from membrane goes this uh, living life kind of um, cable made out of holes, made out of black goo. And then they, I see the vital energy going to each one. Let's just go back to. It just looks crazy. Like when I look inside you, it's all like uh, membranes. And I don't even see anything. I just see balls and balls and balls. And I know that's where organs are. But um, let's see. Let's go back to where the situation started. That's what we need to figure out here. I'm like going through some portal system. It's like one portal connected to the other. And I see you're molding your energy body. It's like black, bright fluorescent purple to me, kind of energy body, and it's being molded. Uh, sometimes you disperse, molecular dispersion happens when you have to go. It's like you teleport. And you go from place to place, place to place. And it's kind of like what I get your presence needed. Your presence needed in some. It's like the universe looks like uh, the map of our world, like countries, right? But there are galaxies. So you kind of like they need to pull your energy to each galaxy. For you to figure out some plan, plan of action. You're very good with uh, planning. It's like strategic planning type thing. Figuring out puzzle pieces put together, four strengths, pull to one part of the body or the other part of the body. That's why they split you up so you're like evenly split up because you actually have this ability to morph, metamorphosis that keeps popping up in my head. Um, so you've been like a lot of beings. You, you, what you do actually, you, you morph into a form and shape of a being. Let's say I see you right now like a giant lizard with a very pokey, triangular type face. And you morph into this as a consciousness to understand this species better how they think, how they function, what they're lacking. And then you bring the knowledge to the universal lab where you work. I'm trying to figure out where you come from because it's like as if you were some sort of um, galactic traveler or something. <laughs> so like this comes to my mind like traveler, cosmic traveler that like scientists but I see you zooming through the universes I see you going back and forth on this spiral of creation you know how to how, how creation works but because of your filters you forgot about it uh, because you've been taken over and dissected and uh, that's why it's almost like your memories are kind of dissected as if you cut up the uh, accents from neurons and the connections there are cut off so you can't, cannot 
a goal in a in a motion that the right energetic kind of motion that you would remember you would keep the memories mm, it's like bits and pieces all over the place in its chaos over um so let me see so from there i just see you and this it's like purple body which is blue blue suit the blue suit has it's like a loop like a oval and then another oval and then another oval and another oval and in size like a molecule but it's it looks more like in molecular biology or you know like um kind of how you draw a cell with with um receptors but receptors kind of look different at the end because they have this um, interesting kind of um, almost like suction cups but inflated I don't know how to explain that but it's some sort of sign and the sign says S S what does S mean it's like scientific or science or you know and also represents that you are trying to no it's actually uh you you tell me it's like a snake it's like um snake or a reptilian race they morph they merge they shape shift they uh they spread out they change their dna they mutate they're all over the place in different shapes and forms and you're trying to study them to understand how to um, conquer them, how to keep them under control, because you're like, um, uh, most of them have parasitic nature to them and they parasite on human souls. And that's why you come here to study that and you've all also aspects of you studying it in different galaxies. And that's when this ass kind of comes from as a letter in, inside that, um, you know, cell looking thing, uh, like a symbology. You came here simply because you heard the, uh, the need, you call it the need to heal, the need to comment, research, but research it from a different point of view um putting a uh, putting uh to the corner to the back burner all the um all the science that we think is science here but it's all inverted and you have to bring your new understanding but it's mostly not at the physical level but mostly at a theoretic level to share with other souls and then we can create like a circle um, of scientists or souls in, involved in, in some sort of scientific operations uh, in, in different galaxies and universe together as a whole and and help out with different species it's kind of like so so that we keep the natural balance going because the balance has to go right right now it's very unbalanced everywhere and that's why it it goes like in zigzag motion like you're showing me um in terms of jumping from hopping from one timeline to another it's kind of very uh it's, like you call it psychotic because people are psychotic and the world is like that too um so basically It's like this. It's like your energy sphere is here. And this table that you are on, it goes to up and down in your energy sphere as if I created out of your energy sphere two floors. So I see I see um, ant people, mantis beings, and grays. 
working together on you. There's also a reptilian who is in charge of the soul. He's very like tall reptilian in armor, like a lot of metal on his chest. Some metal um, kind of rings here. Uh, wrists on the wrists too. There are a lot of equipment and some interesting belt that changes its color. Not only the buckle, but all around. Kind of like the energy goes from the buckle. It's like impulses. Impulses, you know, like when you get a phone call, he gets it by, goes straight to his consciousness, all the commands from the command center. I get this name, Ashar. Uh, command center, reptilian something. On the moon, moon. Um, even though it looks like they moved to Mars right now, headquarters was used to be on the moon, moved to Mars right now. Made this L kind of move, like Earth, Moon, Mars. They go back and forth. So, but. Energetically, Mars suits them better right now. So basically, you you kind of what you do is right now you you get up from bed because I'm, I'm standing around you and I told you telepathically to block them out to do whatever you want, block uh, to freeze them, put them in containers, make them small, whatever you want. Your creator being, you can do anything you want with them. So you made them into little, kind of into smaller ones because they're pretty tall. This reptilian is like, well, nine, ten feet tall. Um, <clears throat> so he doesn't intimidate you. Uh, I see him like in a crystal type uh, rectangular structure that you you made from your by by thinking by your thought. So they're standing in those boxes. There's like a one reptilian, three insect, uh, three um, ant beings. It's like human DNA, 36 mixed with ant DNA. They're black though, the color of black. Human kind of like body. Uh, three of those, um, two insect, uh, two uh, mantis. And there's like, um, like nine grays, but they're kind of like formed like a triangle. Um, and you put them on this kind of like longish type cage. It is. So when you um, you just disconnected, you um, you click like this with your fingers, and the the tubes fell off of you. And I see them like on the. It's almost like they layered your energy sphere with a tile floor. So they're all lying on the um, tile floor. There's tubes. Mm. And you know, you're just like, you say that you're going to burn up, you're going to raise your frequency to the point when the membranes covering your organs are going to burn up. So they're going to melt, melt, melt and disappear, it like dry up into dust and dissipate into the air. That's what you do. Dry it up. It's like they explode, like, gone. The organs look. Uh, molto secco. Oh, oh, sorry, very dry, like, like sucked out of energy. Um, and uh, and you're like expanding them. That you're you're creating the uh, ball of energy that's gonna regenerate each and every organ. And. As the tubes fell off of you, I see the, um, you know, it's almost like a figures um, that fall down, like little um, soldatini, uh, that's a soldiers of, like figures of soldiers falling down. This, I, I know why I speak Italian, because this project is related to Vatican, it's kind of related. Because I'm like, I, I'm starting to see Vatican and um, Pentagon, you know, like uh, the White House. I've, I've been to those places 
in in my sleep state. Um, I remember bits and pieces. I've been at so many places. Um, mm-hmm. It's interesting that you're saying that. I yes, <laughs> makes sense. The, it's it's um because uh, they give money to this project. Uh, that's what they're doing. They know they um the um there is the end to their go- to them governing the world they created. And that's why they're trying to create almost like um, an army to protect themselves of those clones. Yeah. Uh, that's why they need to um, eliminate some of the physical bodies of some people, especially the strong people, the, the very powerful souls. They need to do something to grab those souls because this looks like soldiers can display the multiple, multiple fragments. And instead of uh, grabbing like 50 souls who are totally asleep and he can um, only be split in two halves or three max, they can grab yours and just, you know, it's um, better quality type for them. And that's why they're investing so much uh, time and money into this. So those, the clones fell down. And inst- so you, I see you, as your organs are kind of like regenerating themselves. Um, the the uh, the clones just just getting kind of like <laughs> turning into this uh, dry like a jellyfish in the sun type thing. Um, so that's done. Let's go back to the moment when they actually dissected you because they grabbed you. I see like it's it's like a field of oval spaceships. There's all dark gray metal and reptilian sitting on them. And as you go zoom through the layers of what we call dome to incarnate a nurse to help out from inside the system, they grab you. It's like a force that hits you like like I, I don't know what it is. Um, it's like a beam of light. It's very bright blue, um, and it pushes you into the section that opens up in the spaceship. Right now, from one spaceship to another, one spaceship shoots, hits you, brings you to another one, and that's when there is a lab, and there's like bright lights very bright room in the middle of the spaceship. Those are very large giant giant ships. I mean, they they contain at least 300 um, reptilians. There are some humans on them too. I feel like humans are the source of, it's like scientists or some, uh, uh, the minds, they use their minds there. Uh, and that's when they, uh, hit you it's it's just like um it's a compression device so it came to me it goes like the capsule goes over you but it's like a liquid crystalline whatever it is it's like as if you took a bubble of soap and put it over a person you can do that they they that's what they did when they did that the bubble sucked your energy into over and it's like overlay like your energy body is on top but there's a buffer zone over your semi-physical body and and then then they take this bubble put it into this container on the floor it's like a big bean made out of crystalline crystal structure like glass and then it gets like it's like a laser beam you know, like one laser beam splits into multiple dissection and uh, into this 20 parts, 20 pieces. But then they somehow like get an extract. I see they drain some fluid from you. That fluid looks like purplish and they put it into the container. It's like a, a glass lab tube because I see it and um, it looks like a safe metallic safe type container that they put it in there it's almost like and i feel like it's a cold it's like to preserve 
your DNA, your soul's essence DNA. Because at that moment when they suck it out, I see your body shrinking and when it shrinks, they use some they use some material they put into this um, capsule. It's it's yellow, yellow, bright, a little tint of, tint of green in it, but more like um, this light green. And it glues the parts together and they and then I see it's almost like they're trying to feed them into the baby's body with technology. And I see the mother and I see the um, two greys standing and there's one mantis who is much higher than them is almost like extracting with some suction device like a tube that the it, it's it, it looks kind of wild that like the baby from the mother's uterus and trying to feed your soul of that of those those of those twin pieces glued together into the body uh frequency wise this one doesn't work so they go to another mother it's like um, the mothers they go to they're already in the system we have a database where they implant the souls in particular bodies but the body has to resonate vibrational with the soul the reason why they are uh, dissect uh, compared to uh, the frag uh, into fragments the soul is because that way they can lower your vibration so you can feed in thing mm, so they finally find the mother Kendra, the name is. Because I see her at the appointment was a doctor, male doctor. She speaks Polish, Shratka something. Polish language for sure, recognize. And uh, they say the baby has a grown little big cat. It's it's because um, the energy is most concentrated than they had, and they develop. This baby is going to be very smart, and I see her giving birth, and it's a boy. Andrews, something like this. Andrew. Andrews was an ass at the end, and. Um, so he becomes a scientist. Becomes a scientist. Goes to Wasa from his little village. Dies at the age of 38 because he took him out. He took him out. He served his purpose and they took him out. And see him on the spaceship, on this reptilian spaceship again. Something about collecting collecting database and. Um, um, Fusing him into the um, a scientific world or community of this particular um, research institute that he used to work uh, in the human life. Because through him, um, this research institute is connected to the hospital and they would do all kinds of surgeries on people and bring information also to reptilians and all these programs connected with the government. And, Church also, it's it's just the same thing to me. So um, basically, this is your fourteenth life. The first four lives you kept, you would be taken out, taken out all the time. It's your age around forty. Because uh, th that was enough, because by 40 you would figure out everything. After that fourth life, they figured out how to uh, kind of block, how to, oh, I know what happened. Here is because I see the clones right away. They kept creating those 20 clones one by one. By the time they created them, it's kind of like they drained all your consciousness, as if you're all your conscious, all your conscious mind, your energy, 
is going to the clones, so you don't have much left here in the body, so you can figure things out. Things happening to you, and you're like frustrated, you don't know what's going on. And nobody can really tell you either. So that's that. That's why they figured, you know, after the first line, they would just let you leave because I see the other lives were more like controlled by uh, just the aging process, basically, or depletion of. You would get like vital energy depleted and just die in old age, or or some autoimmune disorder that would because your immune system would react to the lack of vital energy. So you just went back to that time. You deleted, cut it out. It looks like you got this machine, and you cut out the whole piece of this, like a segment of your timeline where they, they took you and, and fragmented you before they put you in all these capsules and all this stuff happened. So you just like eliminate the whole moment how the beam, beam goes. You uh, you you freeze the whole thing, nothing moves, and you zoom through it. You open a portal for yourself that's all for you, and then it closes, it. It closes into one that when you go through it, so they can enter it, they cannot influence you. So all the all the previous thirteen lives, including this one to this moment, they sort of like everything has changed, like a domino effect. As if nothing um, ever happened and you've been doing what you're doing. But the thing is, you always keep the experience, which is good. So you'll never get into this kind of situation again. If, let's say, you decided to help some other plan planet or in some other universe. Um, you got back, you, you kind of like, at this point, you have your DNA together. All the 48 strands that you got. It's kind of interesting. I mean, your your um, energy body is purplish, but the strands of DNA, they have this white, white, bright light that hurts your eyes type thing. That's how it looks to me. But the aura is kind of like this light purple energy, very healing type energy but it's cosmic healing energy. It's, it's like as if every time you go to different places and gain experience, it's it, it reflected in your aura. Um, it's like pattern, it's, a new pattern is created and your aura is composed of different patterns and they all kind of like, it's just like a baggage. Um, like a library of healing energies together because I see like there are like little segments of difference very complex geometric structures glued together into the ream uh, which 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 represents your aura but that's how it looks it looks very interesting I don't even know if anybody could draw this because they um we've never seen anything like this it's too complex. It's like um, some of the geometric figures, we don't even know what those are, how to name them. Um, so I see you clean, no clones, DNA is fine, body is getting regenerated. It's like you're saying, it's like on fire of your bright white light regenerating every muscle tissue, every organ, every cell of your body, everything. And see hybrids. No, they didn't do they didn't create any hybrids. They've been interested in cloning you. And uh, so implants, there's no other implants I don't see because you took out, you kind of start taking out the glasses on your face, but they, by then they melted. And it's kind of like, um, like um, sparkling dust on your, on your hand that was, 
it dissipated, everything kind of dissipated. So you open this big portal for all those cages and you make them roll into the portal by, by themselves, pretty funny, like as if they were on the rollers. Um, here's this thing. You're going, I see you in both spots. It's like you, you split up into holographic images of yourself. And I see you in different, not only this two, not only the uh, White House and um, Vatican buildings, but also some underground facilities because they're all connected through this big, it's kind of like a map. It looks like an energetic obelisk in the middle of the um, what we call the map of the world. And then from that obelisk, second like energy, it goes all this uh, institutions underground, under the water, um, floor level, everywhere. Uh, underground labs connected to this uh, main facilities uh, headquarters that control this research and um, give money to them, sponsor them. Uh, so you pulled some papers. I'm looking at them now. So there is one red book from Vatican. It's yours. They have a huge library there. It, it's so big. I mean, the, the, the shelves are so tall. You need like lot, long letters to get to the top. Uh, you just levitate it up because you're in the energy body. Um, you got this red bulk was the golden kind of on the side on the pages, you know, when they color them gold. And then there's uh, some <clears throat> yellow papers. There are eight of them. They they kind of like put together. Um, the book has your lives. The book has your lives and research connected to each and every life. Plus, it's like a database. The book is also in the Vatican computer system that you raised. I see it's like you you made it black. Uh, and I don't know what you did. You just touched it with your finger, the screen, and everything went black as if you burned up the data about yourself. And this paper is you're just literally burning them with your hands. You, you you put them in the air, they're like the book and the papers, and you're holding your hands like this, and from hands, from palms of your hands goes like energy waves. Um, its quality resembles fire, but it doesn't look like fire, but it's totally burning everything into nothingness. Um, so you don't see, there's no leftovers of it. It's kind of like molecular disintegration. Um, uh, type system and you, you have this interesting thing it's made out of your energy this are not implants it's it's kind of like a greet in each um, hand it's a natural um, ability that you have to draw to use your palms of your hands as as instruments I mean, some people can can do it, uh, can pull all the energy to their head, let's say, and think hard and, you know, figure things out quickly. But for you, it's it's like to your hands. So that's that's how you do it. It looks like a greed of light in your hands. And when I touch that greed, it leads me, it makes me think of your DNA. It's like imprint of your DNA is on there concentrated like your soul's essence like what you can do it's all in there encoded so i see you clean now i mean you you've had you've had a lot of t little strings of things like that that you burnt also like those guys are gone you close the, close the portal um, you've, you've been connected to a lot of uh, Gregory of white and black magic, religious one for sure. Yeah, government. 
um, d different uh, groups of government too. So uh, they all fell off. They they all gone. They all were in that book. The book was very thick. I mean, I felt like the other around thousand pages, like real thick book. The one that you burned up with your hands. So yeah, it's all done. And, um, if you want, you can ask questions or if you want to stop the video. If um, you don't have to stop the video um, for these questions, I don't think. Um, I think um, a lot of this definitely resonates. Um, I know I was traveling a lot in sleep state. I wasn't sure what I was doing. I wasn't sure who I was doing it for. Um, and so, but there, there are very, there are some really specific things that happened. And I wanted to ask you about a particular um, being. I saw um, very vividly a, a white, um, a reptilian, and it was like I was observing him. He was sitting in in like a chair, and he was moving his hands in a certain way and like taking this energy out of like uh, another like a I looked like a human person and I was like observing that and I and I don't know you know what that was I don't know if that was supposed to be me that he was doing that to or if that was someone else and I was just seeing that so I was curious if um that particular being is you know, around, or is that something that I was just maybe getting like, um, sort of like recon intelligence on or something? I don't know. No, you've been, you've made several att attempts to go to Vatican and to steal your book of lives and all this uh, data on you. And uh, there's a lot of white reptilians there. They consider themselves royal and they sit on those. That guy, I see him on the throne type chair. And uh, he's the one who's connected to a lot of people. It's He's kind of like by itself, um, uh, like an egregor of multiple souls connected to him, who worship him in the astral, who think, they actually think he's Jesus because he shapeshifts into oh. Jesus uh, in between lives or in visions, meditations, dream state. Um, and so he just kind of like drains energy because um, you know what happens? That's like a, an energetic strand in between him and somebody else. And as he, sh as he drains energy from that person, he gets enough energy to shape shift into a Jesus figure. And then they give him even more energy because, oh, you know, they adore him and they give like, they feel this love from him, but it's actually not him. It's a cocoon of their own energy of love, true mm -hmm. unconditional love that he uses to deceive them. And that's what you saw. It's like your subconscious was you you your subconscious was trying hard your soul to give you glimpses of what is really going on mm -hmm. so you kind of free remember um so most of this uh, memories would be erased from your mind um <clears throat> another really strange one i um this is more recent i was um like walking through this kind of like deserted sort of urban area and I was yeah, you have to ask I see you the glass is hologram whatever you saw there it's a hologram your yet your soul said right away because yeah. your soul is your question <laughs> just well, say it's, it's funny because it was like I it's like I walked up to this house and it was like full of like vampires and we were kind of like telepathically communicating and I was like, where are all your minions? Like basically nobody's stopping me from coming in. And they sent all these cats out. And then when the cats came out, I shape shifted like into a cat. And then I was talking to the cat and then they brought me like a little baby. And I was like, what was that? I don't understand. That was I going there to get this child or what happened? It was just so 
so incredibly detailed that I remembered that, you know, and I was like, what was that? You know, I, I, I don't know. So I thought I would ask you about that. <laughs> but if it's, it's part of the research, it's uh, to pr provoke you uh, to produce certain emotions needed for particular research because I, I straight away go to the that lab and their spaceship on reptilian spaceship. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have um, a, another like a memory of sort of being maybe on a spaceship where I was laying like on a maybe on a bed or something and I was being rolled down a hallway and I remember looking out the the window and thinking oh those aren't real mountains you know like they were projecting a place outside of there but I wasn't sure if that was like an abduction um you know uh memory or if that was some other just like you know one of these places that I've traveled to to get research or whatever that's what you clones when it was done when they enhanced it with technology and it's almost like um rolling him in into a surgical type room mm. because they were doing something with organs what comes to me all the time mm. <clears throat> for um you were saying something about um earth to the moon to mars so um do i have any any lives or anything on Mars because I have some I feel like I have some memories of of being there and um, just more of like um, seeing uh, seeing what the landscape looks like like being outside there um, but not really remembering what I was doing there right because all the um, some of the clones I get number five being on Mars, serving mm -hmm. on Mars. Uh, it comes to me, Mars Defense Force, and it's like you're patrolling, you're looking around. Mm. See, uh, because see how interesting, because your consciousness partially was in those clones, you also would get memories from them. Right. And that's, yeah. Great okay. fusion. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 no. You, you can talk. I mean, it's kind of hard to not to interrupt because like you see you 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 get information and you're also. So so that's making a lot of sense with. So basically all of these clones are having these experiences and yet some of that is feeding back to me. So I'm remembering little just snippets of things that they're doing, but that's not actually what I was I'm actually doing because my consciousness was trapped in this like mummified like tube situation. Yeah, because it's like, you know, there was about 8% of your consciousness in each of their bodies. So you still got the interesting part is you still got the experience and the knowledge through that experience of what they've been doing. So uh, if you like retrieved all the memories at the physical level from all those 20 clones, mm. that would be like you would be writing a lot of books <laughs> or you would be sharing information with others nonstop because it's a lot of different interesting missions and stories and scientific research and how they do it, specifics. Yeah, but the problem is the our brain processor cannot contain so much memory and that's why you would get like little bits and pieces and all this on top of memory is getting erased naturally also not only technically you know but naturally um so sorry that just something i i had a thought in my head and then it just left but um one thing um that I wanted to ask you about was my childhood in this life right now. Um, I, I spent a huge part of my childhood just absolutely terrified with night terrors. And um, I was just curious if that was some type of, you know, is that some type of demonic sort of 3D 
you know, interference or attack? Or was that something that was happening? Let's say they were maybe, you know, trying to take me and I was, and they were making it seem like it was like demonic or something. I see that this white reptilian will come to you a lot. And this other reptilian in armor. The, and uh, this reptilian in actually the white one, he uh, he would say, you're mine, you know, you're mine. And then if, when you say, no, no, I'm not yours, and you would try to kind of oppose, you know, put up a fight. He would just try to scare you because they, they um, and also I got the word preparation for preparing you mentally, emotionally, in, into the state of fear so they can better control you. They can fragment you and use you uh, type thing. And that's why, you know, a lot of children have nightmares because it just means they are preparing them for something, some programs or, or draining energy, simply draining energy uh, through that fear mode type adrenaline rush and you know holograms that they put them in the dream state their energy bodies a lot of time they project it and some sometimes you know a lot of times they would take them out like abduct them energetically yeah. but just like i see them as cubes holographic cubes with different projections of different i mean it can be reality with vampires running around or giant spiders whatever it depends on the program the child is in or you know and then a lot of times they would take children and um, do a lot of research on them or, or put them through situations to test their ability to do this and that or figure things out. I mean, it just depends. In your case, that was that. They were just like, they, they were really close to me that this, this white skin reptilian was really cherishing you. It's like you're the golden one, you know, one of the bunch that I really admire that we got you. Uh, so I got when you said that he would say things to me like your mind, I got such incredible chills. He, he would say things like that and he would be like, just take my hand, just take my hand. And I would be like, no, no. I mean, I would I would be screaming, you know, and just I mean, it was so real. Um, but I wouldn't see that face, you know, I didn't see that being, it was just like, you know, in my mind, I just thought it was something like, you know, the devil, the de a demon or something, because I couldn't see anything, um, you know, that was there. It was just always like an, like an invisible force. Mm -hmm. And, and there would be times where in my dream state, something like that, like an invisible force would just like grab me by the neck and push me up against you know the ceiling and hold me there and I would be you know just terrified I mean that's even happened in the last few years you know and I would just be like okay I don't know what that is you know because I, I can never see it whereas in some other scenarios I would see whatever I was fighting or running from or you know um, what I was observing yeah yeah, well, it's been throughout life, still, it just kind of like, um, in a way, amplified, you know, the more lives you have, the more terror, and all this um, experiences you have, kind of combined mm -hmm. as a whole. So, I have a question about um, energetic, sort of like the light body, or like um, our protective shield, um, because mm -hmm. I just had a... a a dream where I was um, I was like in a room and there was like two humans you know uh, in front of me and they were like planning something or we were all planning something and then all of a sudden it was like something was about to happen and I saw like the male look at the female and he made just a tiny little move with his mouth and I saw it and I said to them whatever you think is about to happen here isn't and then I turned and then from that perspective, I was looking at me and my body almost, it turned into like an Egyptian, like sarcophagus, you know, like that's shaped like the body. And it was like metallic and 
bright colored and it was like that it just like zipped around my body really fast and then I just turned into like a ton of like sparkles and I was out of there and it was so weird because I was like oh my gosh is that you know in when you think about ancient histories and stuff and the sarcophagus like where did that come from you know is that what the the sort of protective light body looks like and it, you know they were sort of recreating that in the Egyptian uh, timelines or something I don't know I just thought I would ask you about that <clears throat> Well, they mummify the bodies to kind of preserve the soul inside. They capture it, you know. Mm -hmm. so a lot of times, the soul will just stay inside, stuck. For sometimes, when they can unfreeze or take the uh, body out of that stasis, kind of like preserve preservation mode, I don't know how to call it. But in your case, I saw almost like I couldn't figure out. But it's 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 a um, spaceship, but it, it was shape shifting as I was observing it because I was looking. I'm looking at it like as you're talking, and it looks like um mm, like um top of a mushroom. And uh, and that is this was like a pyramid shaped spaceship that has this in underneath if you look up it's like a big opening opens up inside and you can see i mean it's just like giant it's it's even bigger when you walk in than you visually see um like like, like a flying city of some sort and i i i what i feel and see that you've been going to different timelines including egyptian timeline like I remember I told you you have the ability to shape shift and morph and merge mm -hmm. into and to study more about those times and how they took over technological civilization of Egyptians, how they um, inverted everything, how they use the technology and how you can figure out how to undo it. So it can be used for humans in the new era and the new kind of um, uh, world that we're entering, new reality that we're entering right now type thing. Because it's all for you is science and information that you would like to collect and observe. That's why you kind of go and you experiment on yourself. You're like a scientist. You would like to experience how it feels. Right, and and in a theric, you can actually become an Egyptian. And you can become a mommy for for <laughs> for a minute or two and experience it. So this is kind of like a glimpse and pieces of what you are doing, also. And the the another thing that they didn't really have influence on that because they would let you do it a lot by yourself with your own initiative because they would also watch you and see how you do it and maybe through you they can uncover some of the secrets they don't know so it was like that too um so is it possible to um you know comment or or if you can um access um you know now that I'm sort of clear of these implants and sort of we're hitting the reset button here. Um, how I can best, you know, uh, utilize what I'm doing uh, or what I'm here for, sort of my purpose to, to help with this new sort of new earth, new, um, you know, timeline that we are moving into. Like you know what, what you, it's like rays instead of the tubes that we you removed the rays of your energy it's like purple greed around you forming being formed and people who are of that purple type um energetic frequency pattern are being drawn to you so from now on you'll get you get to connect to a lot of people who are of the same frequency so you can build up that energetic grid to help up 
um, to help with the development to make it faster. The transition to make it faster because in a way we already did the first step to transition and now it's going to be um, I see like building zone like we have to structure right now we're structuring at the etheric level and it helps to be clean and use your abilities um, by your etheric DNA abilities to invent something in the etheric so it can come down in the physical and there are going to be more and more people involved in that at the physical level also but right now it's just like in the stage you know when you write something down it puts sketches down on the paper and that's the stage you're at and we're at a lot of us in the etheric um but we're also doing it in the physical step by step so um i just see you doing that, being involved in future projects. So a lot of people are going to be involved. It's just going to be like a switch thing going on. When we're done with this uh, energy wave of nonsense right now that's going on in the world, because it's going to dissipate. It's going to go away. It just, that, that was the last kind of push energetically. Trying to change for but you know like the, the dark ones try to change uh well we've been planning for 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 millennium yeah to about the outcome you know that outcome is now cannot be changed so they kind of really kind of tried their best at the end here but nothing worked so but from now on it's going to be the situations, the things, the people that are going to come to your life. That's what I feel. So you have to think in that direction. <coughs> Sorry. Um, is it is it possible to look into, let's say, like my mother or some other, you know, sort of my family as part part of my soul family or how you know they, they might represent um in my life um uh, particularly my mother i we've just had a really um difficult uh relationship yeah, because you're not part of any soul group here <laughs> no you just basically you were um the thing is you were very sure of yourself you've been doing it forever you know, at a soul level, uh, kind of helping out through research and uh, investigation and scientific studies. And that's why it wasn't like you didn't really kind of care. See, I'm reading a different timeline when you weren't grabbed, you weren't used right now. As you were going, your intention, your true intention, I'll incarnate in whatever family I can get through anything because I'm, I'm I'm strong and my consciousness is high enough to get through anything. That's how you are going. And um, there, there's no resonance with your family members. I see you totally by yourself, uh, totally doing your thing. You came to do here. It's like a business matter for you. You know, you came to do your job and go back. Mm. So it's, I mean, that's, that's quite accurate, <laughs> but you know, it's it's one of those things where, of course, we live here in this reality, and there's certain expectations that people have, you know, and there's that sort of family guilt, if you will, you know, because you don't have a, a good relationship or this or that, you know, and it's it's something where, you know, you start to feel like uh, you're defective or something because. Um, you can't make that work, you know, and, uh, but what you said ma makes a lot of sense to me, uh, because I am alone. I have been alone for quite some time, always on my own, um, as soon as I was out of my parents' house. So interesting, um, tough, it's tough, you know, but you don't remember what you, you know, you don't remember what you said you would come in and do. So, you know, I don't remember that I was like, oh, I can do anything <laughs> and, you know, just put me wherever, you know, hard. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of us are like that. I mean, most, I mean, you get call star seeds or whatever you want to call, 
but most most of those souls who came to help are rather independent and uh, lonely in the you know the human kind of uh, perception because um, we we um, you get contaminated by others you really do especially your family and family runs by the matrix program I mean all you do is you're being stopped on your way it's uh, these are obstacles on your way you have to deal with you spend all your energy dealing with your family members instead of doing what you came here to do and that's why it's kind of natural that way plus at a soul level we're all autonomous and independent we don't really need each other you know what i mean it's like you can create a universe just for yourself mm. so i mean of course you can have a creator with you right and we do talk to each other and telepathically connect but most of the time we're by ourselves as i see so. i think just one more question um do you, so you're you're mentioning that I'm sort of this purple energy being. Um, do do I come from some place of origin? Um, you know, is there any more information about sort of uh, what type of you know maybe galactic connections I have? You're saying some interesting things. It's like a so like a Milky Way field was purple energy, clusters of purple energy, and then you say I came through the purple stargate. Um, and it's that purple um, field of energy is, is you call it like a water pool of healing energy of stars. Those are all stars. And you can lay on them like on the mattress and they would heal you. That's what you're saying. At, this, at, a, at a soul level. Mm, I see you like in between the universe's space. Actually, a lot of souls are from, from different spaces in between this buffer zone, in between universes. It's kind of like they need to keep neutral, they need to keep themselves like a, 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 in observing mode. And then whoever needs help, then they would rush to to do it. But other than that, they're in this observant mode, keeping the space for others to come and heal themselves. That's where you come from, as I see. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me turn off.